Here's the Windows XP background. She's a beaut. But what if Makoto Shinkai wanted to add two teenagers kissing to it? Ah, that's better. I came across this image randomly one fine summer day, and though I can't read it at all, the images present all the information I needed to start developing a way I could replicate my own sun rays. For starters, create a document that's taller than it is wider. Typically a regular A4 US paper size is good. That's 11 by 8.5 inches. Let's make some noise! Filter, render, Perlin noise. Apply a motion blur by going to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Set the strength to 85 and the angle to 90. Add a gradient map layer. Go to Layer, New Correction Layer, Gradient Map. Drag the black and white slider towards each other to really crunch the values. That's better. There are a few methods to finish the process. I'll start with the time saving method. Once you're happy with how many light rays there are, I'm going to merge the gradient map adjustment to the noise layer by pressing Ctrl E, and then apply another motion blur to help smooth out some of the edges. A strength of 85 again. Next, press Ctrl I to invert the colors, turning the whites black and the blacks white. This will allow us to remove the background of the rays. Go to Edit, Convert Brightness to Opacity. This is going to tell Clip Studio Paint to turn the white into alpha and keep the blacks as opaque. Bonus tip, this is a super handy way to lift your inks from a scanned image. Control I again to return the rays back into white. Using the free transform option by going to Edit, Transform, Free Transform, drag the corners of the transform box around where you want your rays to be. Go to Blur, Radial Blur, and drag that red X to the corner of your rays to really give them that extra oomph. This process can be heavy on your computer, just be aware. Create a new layer, clip to the layer below using this button, and press G to open the gradient panel. Select the default rainbow gradient. Select the radial gradient option from the subtool panel. Make a small click and drag motion to create a series of colorful circles emanating from the source of the rays. Lower the opacity a bit, and voila! If you want to add extra spice, merge and duplicate the layers, making sure the colors are completely opaque, add a slight Gaussian blur from the blur filter menu, and set the layer blend mode to add glow or glow dodge, depending on your situation. Now for the more difficult technique. It's not that hard, but it does take more time and I personally like these results more. Just like my previous video on how to make a retro anime filter effect, we're going to turn this black and white information into three separate color channels. Make three duplicates of your ray base. Name one red, one green, and one blue. Go to Layer, New Correction Layer, Levels. Press OK. Make three duplicates of the level adjustments. Each ray layer needs its own levels adjustment. One for red, one for green, one for blue. Work on each layer one at a time. Double click on the levels. We're going to isolate the red channel here. Go to the green channel. Disable it by drawing its output from right to left. From the drop menu, select the blue channel and disable it the same way. To isolate green, we have to disable red and blue. To isolate the blue, we have to disable red and green. Clip them to their respective layers using this button. Now set each ray's layer blend mode to screen or lighten. Now we can mess around with a chromatic aberration effect for the rays. For best results, drag the red down just a little bit and the blue up a bit. Something like this. Disable the paper layer or any color layers behind the effect and right click at the top layer, select Merge Visible to New Layer. The effect is now rasterized and we can move it around as we see fit like the previous technique. We'll do the same free transform method to pin it in the corner. Apply a radial blur at the base of the rays Set the blend mode to lighten or screen, and that's it! For this final technique, let's go back a few steps to just the noise. I'm going to apply the default Perlin noise settings to the document. Just a quick note, but I recommend working on a slightly smaller resolution for this one, and by the end you'll see why. 
something within the range of 2000 to 2500 pixels width height. Next, apply a blur, radial blur, with the string set to 20, and the X at its default location, which should be in the center of the document. We want to find those white shapes again, so using either a tone curve or gradient map, let's get our sun ray base extracted. I use a gradient map for clearer results, but a tone curve with nearly touching bezier curves could work as well. We'll merge down the curve into the noise, pressing Ctrl E again, and make three copies, naming them red, blue, and green. I think you know where we're going with this. Get three new correction layer level corrections, and name them RGB, clipping them to their respective sunray bases, red, green, and blue. Following the same steps as technique number two to create a chromatic aberration effect, isolate the red, blue, and green channels to each level adjustment. Set the sunray bases to screen. These are the white shapes. Now select the liquify tool and make the brush size radius to its max of 2000, and this is where the dock size becomes important. I have a strength of 40, and the behavior is set to pinch. Selecting the blue layer, and clicking without moving your mouse, place your mouse in the center of the document, and begin to see the blue channel recede into space as you click. Once you're happy, switch the behavior to expand and select the red channel, performing the same calculated click to expand it outward. I kind of go back and forth between expanding and pinching to get the right look until I'm happy with it. Right click the top layer and select Merge Visible to New Layer. Apply a small radial blur of 5 pixels in the center. You can now copy paste this effect into your pieces and set the blend mode to lighten or screen. You can get access to a free sample of the Liquify Sunray effect on my Gumroad, which you can use in your illustrations without attribution. If you want to learn similar techniques but for animation, check out the DaVinci Resolve version, but the same principles can be applied to any compositing software. If you haven't picked up Clip Studio Paint just yet, but are thinking about it, and you should, it's great software. Consider using my affiliate link. It gives me a small kickback on your purchase at no extra cost to you. Win-win! If you want to support me directly, you can join the Lizard Legion by becoming a channel member for exclusive channel perks like early access to videos, livestream emojis, livestream archives, and exclusive content. Until next time.